Okay, today I want to talk about the Intersection Observer. This is a relatively new API in HTML5 that allows you to track when elements come onto the screen or into a viewport. So here's my web page right here. This is what we're going to build. Uh, I've got a simpler starter version of the code that we're going to build up to this. So what's happening is I've got a series of 30 paragraphs with just lorem ipsum text. And as I scroll down the page, these guys are actually all going to be off the screen. And we want them to slide onto the screen as we scroll up. So you can see here, there's the next one here. It's off the page. The top one now slid off. And as I go up, they all start to slide on. And we're doing this with the intersection observer. Now this colored area here is just an overlay that I've put to show where I've set the margins for detecting the intersection of the elements. So when the new paragraphs are coming up and 5% of these guys is now in this viewport area, that's the trigger. So right here, there's, I'm just touching this one down here, but as I hit the 5% mark, that's when they start to scroll on and they scroll off as they leave that area. So we're going to look at how to do this with JavaScript. Okay, uh, my CSS, uh, my container, that's just the main div on the page, uh, basic styling for the paragraphs, and I've got a transform which is moving them off to the left, negative 100%. Now, you'd think 100% isn't that going to take it off the screen, but in this case, because they're not the entire width of the screen, it's only moving them this amount. And that's why they're sitting here. So this line right here, that's where they end up because it's the width of this that they're moving to the left. And I've got a transition on them that says it's going to take half a second to move over. Now, if we wanted, we could do something with opacity as well. Um, set it to zero and then make it come to one to make them appear. We'll look at doing that a little bit later. And this is my, um, well, actually, I may as well leave this on. There we go. This is the overlay that I was talking about. This is just the colored area. And at the top and the bottom, I've got a 250, pix 250 pixel margin. That's the gap at the top and the bottom here. So this area, this is where we're targeting. Okay, so we've got the container. And this is the one that's got the 30 paragraphs inside of it. And then the cover, which is just the overlay. There's no content. It's just sitting there on top. All right. Now, the intersection observer. Let's build one of those. So let's create an observer object. New intersection observer. So you need to have one of these objects, and this is the thing that's going to attach itself or have objects attached to it. So we can watch those elements as they move around the screen and see, are they touching each other? It takes two things. The first thing is some sort of callback method. Uh, let's just call it be touching. So this right here, this is the method that's going to be called or the function that's going to be called every time we do have that intersection between events or every time the intersection goes away. Both when it enters and when it leaves, it's going to trigger this. And then the second parameter is this options object. Now inside the options object, there's three properties, root, root margin, and threshold. Now root, oh sorry, that should be yeah, that's right. Uh, root is going to be which element do you want to use as the viewport. Now, almost always you're going to use the screen, the whole web page. So if you leave it to null, it's just going to use the current viewport. So my web page's viewport, that's what I see on the screen here. So that whole area. Now, if you want to adjust that, that's the, the root margin right here. And this is like a CSS margin properties. I can put one, two, three, or four values. They'll be interpreted as top, right, bottom, left, if you put four of them. Or if I put two of them, it's top and bottom, and then left and right. So that's what we've done here. And I've set this to the same as what I did here for the margins. That's how those are in sync. So negative 256. 
What that means is I'm subtracting from the viewport. I'm contracting the top and the bottom by 250 pixels. So we get to this area here by pulling the top down, by pulling the bottom up by 250. And then 0 and 0 means I go all the way to the edges here. If I wanted to adjust those, we could change these numbers. Let's say if we did 50 pixels and 50 pixels like that, that's going to change what I see from my viewport. Actually, I think I'm, yeah, my script is gone, but you can see I've pulled it in by 50 and 50. And then to, mi to mimic that, I'd say negative 50 pixels here on the root margin. So I'm pulling in the sides, the left and right by 50, and I'm pulling the top and bottom in by 250. We pass these options in. The final one here, threshold, this is what percentage do you want to have? So this is the thing that we're going to be tracking right here when what percentage of this is touching the viewport? Do you want to use that as the trigger? Okay, so be touching, we haven't defined that, so let's do that. Function be touching. And when this is called by the intersection observer, what it's going to pass in here is an array. Here's an array of all of the different things that you've added to this observer. So you can call it entries, you can call it elements, whatever you want to call it. Now, right now, this is active. But on my page, nothing is going to happen here because I've never added anything. I haven't come in here and said, OK, I want you to watch all the elements here, all these paragraphs. So let's do that. Let's actually add those on there. We have our observer, that's the intersection observer object, and it has a few methods. There's observe and unobserve, those are the two that you're going to use the most. Observe takes an HTML element. You're saying, this is the thing that I want you to watch. So with the observe method, we want to put inside of here an element that we're going to watch. We want the observer to watch one or more elements. Well, what are the things that we want to watch here? We want to watch all the paragraphs inside this container. So let's put this inside of a loop. We'll do document query selector all. And I want inside the class container all of the paragraphs. So we're going to watch all of those. So I'll put that uh, that's going to be a node list for us, and we're going to call for each paragraph. And we put our observe method right inside there. Okay, so for every one of the paragraphs, we're going to call this function, and we pass the paragraph in there. Now, this is going to be watching all 30 paragraphs. We could write that out there. Let's do uh, p dot text content. So it's going to write out the text of every paragraph that it's watching. There it is. You can see that we've got all the paragraphs. They're all being observed. OK, great. So we know that works. It has looped through and it's observing. But now we want to see this be touching method running. We want to see something happening in here. All right, so what do we want to do? when it's touching. Well, in our CSS, we have this class called active, and that's the thing that's going to translate it onto the screen. That's the thing that's going to animate it. So we'll come down here and add that class active. So entries, that is the array of every one of them. So here we added 30 things. There was a trigger. It called this function, and this is all 30. So it's everything that you've added to that observer to be watched. It's not just the one that was touching, it's all of them. We have to now loop through all the entries. And we're going to look at each one and find out one thing about it. So entry and 
if entry dot is intersecting. This is a property that will tell us whether or not it's intersecting. All right, so this should loop through and it should only write intersecting for the ones that are actually intersecting the area that we've defined within our viewport. Two. Two times it was called. Right here and right here. There's two of them. If I scroll up, you can watch the number up here. As I move along, every time I scroll by, I'm hitting more and more of these. So this is keeping track of the ones that are touching. Now, inside of here, we have a whole bunch of properties. Entry.target. This is the actual HTML element. So you can see it's the paragraph. That's the target. Now that one's going to write out a lot of stuff, so I don't want to necessarily keep that one there. Uh, entry dot is intersecting. We have that. Time and intersection ratio. So the time, I'll come in here, you can see there's the time and there's the intersection ratio. So this big long number here, the 26 is part of this big long number right here. That is the time. That's the timestamp. And this is the percentage that is touching. Okay, let's comment those out again. And what we really wanted to do was entry.target, that is the paragraph, class list dot add active. Now that's going to bring them all onto the screen. So as we scroll, we can see that it's bringing them all on. Now, if that's all you wanted to do, if you just wanted to bring them on for the first time and leave them there, great. But I don't really need to do anything more with them after that. Once I've added this class, if that's the case, then what I would do is I would say observer dot unobserve entry dot target. I'm going to tell it to stop watching that one. Now that's if I don't want to do anything more, if I don't ever want to watch that again, if I just want to clear up system resources. Now observer is declared here. I don't have access to it here. So I do need to put this in a scope where it can be recognized or I can take advantage of the fact that this callback gives me a second property. So this observer right here also gets passed into this function. So we can say observer, which is this one. If you want to use a different variable just to see that it is the different one, we can do that. Now I'm saying no longer watch that paragraph. Okay, so two have intersected. And if I scroll up, you can see they all 30 of them get affected. But as I scroll back down, nothing else is happening. This number is not changing again. And that's because I'm no longer watching them. So I'm, I'm freeing up those system resources. Now, if we want to go to the thing that I was doing originally, where I was moving them on and moving them off, in that case, what I would do in here is entry.target.classList.remove active. So now, if it's touching, I'm adding the class active. If it's not, I'm removing the class active. And that is going to make them slide off. Just like that. And that's the basics of the intersection observer. So we have this unobserve and the observe. We have the creation of 
the intersection observer, and then we have a callback function. And that's all there is to it. You define these options to say where you want to build your viewport and how much of it you want to be touching, what percentage you want it to be touching, the things that you're observing. And that's it. It's a pretty simple method. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.